This is Akashwani. In the program spotlight, now we bring a discussion on staying safe from the impact of air pollution. The participants are Dr. Neeraj Kumar Gupta, Professor, Respiratory Diseases, Savdarjang Hospital, and Nishit Kumar Anka. Air pollution is the release of pollutants such as gases, particles, biological molecules, etc. into the air. And this has assumed gigantic proportions with the problem exacerbating this season. And to discuss more about it, today we are privileged to have with us Dr. Neeraj Gupta, Professor of Respiratory Diseases, Savdarjang Hospital. Dr. Gupta, welcome to the show. Thank you for this welcome and uh, good evening to all my listeners as well as uh, wishing you happy Deepavali in advance. Dr. Gupta, first of all, we would like to know, please uh, enlighten our listeners as to what air pollution normally means. Because uh, what we do understand is that pollution is anyways prevalent in the air all the time. But uh, in this season, especially in, at this part of the year or so, this problem kind of multiplies many folds. So we would like to know what air pollution at this time of the year actually means. Yeah, you were right to the certain extent that uh, air is always polluted with something and uh, be it the vehicular exhaust, whether it is the coal dust, construction dust, burning of garbage, burning of agriculture crops, residues, or whether it's industrial emissions, fossil fuel feeds, or thermal power plants, so etc. Cetera, et cetera. There are so many reasons why there are uh, pollutants and one of the major, of course, reasons is the vehicular exhaust. But why this time or why in this particular month only we are particularly worried about this actually thing is that during this particular time the weather changes the cold actually sets in and because there is cold the cooler air tends to set near the surface so does the pollutant which is congesting this air which means all this particulate matter being heavier comes down toward the surface now why at this particular time is because there are certain changes which takes place during this particular time. You have not only the change of the seasons, you have more of pollinations and flowering seasons. You have the crop, which is the prali, which is the burning season. You have also you know, the festivals where a lot of burning activity takes place. And on top of it, the cold air, the air movement is such that the pollution tends to be near. So it becomes smog and plus additions of fog can also let's in become the smog. So mm-hmm. during this particular three months, especially in Delhi, which gets uh, you know air from all those you know northern areas, including Pakistan, where all this burning is taking place, so the smoke can drift towards the city, the site. And because these are the reasons why the air quality takes a dip during this particular time. Dr. Gupta, you talked about uh, why this uh, problem actually exacerbates during this period. Of course, Mm -hmm. among the many factors that you mentioned, we also assume that uh, the natural weather itself, be it uh, the particulate uh, matter or the gaseous thing, even the droplets, they contribute much to the pollution. Tell us something more about it. Precisely, that's why it is said that during this particular time when the temperature drops, the cold sets in. So the cold air tends to stay near the surface. The hot air moves up, but the cold air tends to move near the surface. That is mm-hmm. why the, all the smoke tends to settle down near the surface. And over the days, it tends to become more and more near the surface. That is one aspect. Two, the construction activities and all these activities remain the same, but then new activities like the prali burning, agricultural waste burning, garbage burning, you know, all those uh, puja activities, cracker activities, all this also added extra into the system. So this becomes heavily loaded with this particulate matter. The particulate matter we are talking about is particulate matter 2.5 and 10. Why 2.5? Because that is the smallest particle which actually tends to penetrate much deeper into the lunger tissues. And this lung tissue tends to actually, this particle reaches the end of the uh, lung system where it can actually penetrate into the body and cause harmful effect. Mm-hmm. And this particular matter has been blamed for all the harmful effects, whether it is the stroke, whether it is the heart attack, whether it is the low respiratory infections or lung cancers, or whether it is the cancer to any other part of the body, including like a uterus. And it also causes, uh, these gaseous matters also causes a lot of cognitive problems, the headaches, the increase in the efficiency of the brain. Beside, of course, the obvious side effects which you see like burning of the eyes, the irritation in the nose, the irritating cough, the shortness of breath, the chest tightness or the chest pains or, you know, the, the skin involvement. So all this effect takes place because of the immediate contact with these pollutants. 
this pollution all around of course uh, it's so very difficult for uh, each one of us to avoid it especially the working class the people who are going out of their houses to work to their factories to the workplaces to offices schools colleges etc etc but talking mm-hmm. here specifically about the children the child and the elderly population here i understand your question the issue here is not just the school going children it is basically if you can divide you can divide it into three four type of populations one okay. of course healthy individuals which are exposed they can actually bear the brunt to a certain extent mm-hmm. depending upon the amount of exposure right number 2 is the population which is already having certain chronic diseases for example like they may be having asthma copd heart disease renal failure cancers or you know all sorts of uh, lung conditions or body conditions which decrease their immunities third of course is those vulnerable populations which included the like school going children or less than 5 years of age or old age people or pregnant women and then there's another population is called occupational hazard people mm-hmm. these are the people who are actually are forced to work for example it could be traffic inspector it could be construction worker it could be a rickshaw puller it could be a school it could be a bus driver or transport man drivers you know and including the school going children also which are sharing the same you know space while going and coming right. so all these are become the vulnerable population so all these are equally affected but the impact is far more on the population which has certain vulnerability which mm-hmm. could be the extremes of ages pregnant women or those people who are actually exposed for a much much longer period than us so these are the people who tend to be severely involved and has a so called harmful impact of the pollutants especially during this season and these are the people who actually should take precautions if they can avoid during the heaviest exposure period like for example early morning late mm-hmm. evenings when the traffic congestion could be higher or the because of the weather conditions the smog exposure is higher so they should avoid going out during this particular time mm-hmm. or if at all they have to go then they preferably should wear n95 or n99 mask they can give a certain safety to them mm-hmm. they must take this precaution one avoid to if at all they have to go they must wear this mask you lay much emphasis on the vulnerable population and of course the people with occupational hazard like the traffic person the traffic uh, personnel the police who is uh, manning the traffic signal and things like that but when we talk about uh, persons who have some ailment some kind of disease some existing pre existing disease who are actually bound to their home only who are not venturing out yeah. still they are at some level of some risk would you advise them to prevent you know from contracting any disease further so these are the people whom we are talking about are the one who are having already pre existing condition for example they could be having copd could be having asthma they could be having like tuberculosis they could be having chest infections they could be having like post covid status they could be having heart problems or uh, no problems or they could be having some other medical condition like uh, kidney failure also so these are the vulnerable population especially among these persons who are having lung problem like asthma they are tend to they are the one who actually get precipitated or tend to get worsened with just even a small exposure so these are the people who actually should take precaution number 1 is to never to go out and expose themselves to the pollutants number 2 they must continue with their medication try to stay indoor wear mask if they can keep themselves in a area where there are no exposure for example when i talking about indoor even indoor pollution can also be you know affecting them for example if you are like diwali cleaning time mm-hmm. when you do lot of cleaning lot of dust is generated and which can actually trigger their asthma so preferably they should do wet cleaning or vacuum cleaning and keep their windows and of sort of door locked they expose themselves only during the time when the pollution is much less than that is between 12 to 4 then they can actually venture out for some time but try to prevent exposure keep their medication handy and keep continuing with their medicines and any first sign of worsening for example if their breathlessness is not getting better or their saturation is dropping they must visit an hospital to get treatment one very important point i would like to touch uh, is about the fitness freaks who are really very so very committed to their fitness and all who would go for the morning walk or for the morning jog even for the evening jog and all so what advice would you give them to just prevent since we are talking about prevention and all so what advice giving to these people 
you call them fitness freak but let us say they are the one who are really into fitness and they would not leave their exercise because they are so committed to their exercises but yes they are the one who will also be getting exposed and may get into some kind of a situation so these are the individuals who are advised to avoid going in the early morning or late evening especially when the smog is at the highest levels so otherwise their health is going to be affected directly so their fitness is going to be impacted they must not go they should actually go at the time when the pollution exposure is likely to be less that is when the sun comes out during let us say this particular time maybe early evening maybe late mornings but not prior to that or if they can do indoor exercises fitness exercises that will be preferable after all it's only a question of few weeks mm-hmm. and they must be able to adjust their exercise to other levels so that they can remain fit but not getting exposed what in your view could be the long term as well as the short term solutions about this problem and also what could be done to spread public awareness and things like that amongst uh, the masses yes. the government is really making a lot of efforts they have made committees they have issued advisories for states for districts for everyone they have given the iec material so that people should be more aware they make announcements give it in medias also but it is the people who should be more aware and uh, must learn to take prevention one two they also have a social responsibility i am not just a consumer i am also a producer let me not produce any pollutants let me try to avoid you know taking vehicles unnecessarily not burn anything do not produce pollution i have a responsibility towards the state as well that is my uh, take on this and uh, the government is already making lot of efforts for example like vehicle they have given issues guidelines to use electrical vehicles or safer fuels use alternate modes of fuels for energy purposes they are moving industries away from the cities to so that the pollution or congestion is avoided but yes it's a you know, long time but more importantly we must understand our social responsibility we have a responsibility towards our children also so let us be very very clear on this mm-hmm. we are the producers of this pollution so we are the one who will take solution we should avoid it avoid as much as we can dr gupta talking of person who is already afflicted with some disease you were talking about uh, a person who is uh, asthmatic and all now in this mm-hmm. season mm-hmm. of course you know with the air pollution at its peak the asthmatic patient and other patients who has respiratory diseases and things like that it tends to shoot more so what if the condition worsens for the patient what should be the precaution and what should they be doing further to kind of control the situation i'm very clear on this people with respiratory diseases who are on medication must not miss their medication must avoid exposure to the pollution must not venture outside unnecessarily if they have to venture try to use a mask but these people also do not like to wear mask because sometimes they feel it gives them breathlessness if they get first signs of like for example they get unnecessary coughing which is not going away they getting wheezing sounds they feeling breathless their saturation if they are monitoring is going to towards 90 then they must actually not only take their medicine but also go to the hospital to the doctor to take advice and follow the advice precaution yes they must not venture outside they remain indoor avoid pollution exposure as much as they can even if they like it but it should be virtual diwali for them rather than going out and play diwali Dr Gupta one very important and last question talking of oxygen saturation we have seen during the covid times that a saturation dropping near 90 it would be mostly a panic situation for people but now talking of these normal times what's the mm-hmm. red mark as per you beyond which a person should be worried we have two guidelines in this regard one is of course if you exercise like so we suppose you walk and if your saturation drops by 3% or 4% then it is a red line which means suppose it is 97 and if you walk and after some time you are feeling breathless and saturation coming down to 93 then this means that your airways are really vulnerable they require treatment and you must visit a doctor or other red line is of course 90% 90% below is called if respiratory failure so it must be taken seriously and visit hospital thank you so much sir for having joined in thank you so much you were listening to a discussion on staying safe from the impact of air pollution the participants were dr neeraj kumar gupta professor respiratory diseases safdarjang hospital and nishit kumar anka this program is produced and presented by the news services division of akashvani you can listen to it on a mobile app news on air
This program is also available on our YouTube channel, News on AIR Official. You may share your feedback about this program through email at airnsdtalks at gmail.com or WhatsApp on 9289094044.